All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this video. It is November 30th, 2023. Core PCE data is about to come out. 40 seconds. This is the S chart, five minute time frame. What I'm going to do is I want to see the initial reaction. And then if it's a strong reaction, and if the data is maybe somewhat surprising, then we can wait for the second candle and see if we can find a good um, risk parameter so we don't risk, you know, like 20 points or 40 points or something. But let's see what happens here. So a few seconds and then they will publish it. There we are. Still waiting, it seems. There are some numbers. I'm still waiting for, I guess, the most important one. Initial jobless claims are in line with expectations, which is interesting to know. Personal income and personal spending is in line with expectations. And kind of still waiting for the real data here. What is this? Continuing jobless claims are actually higher than expected. With, you know, the market might like a little bit, but I don't think this is the um, big narrative today. So here's the data now. Core PCE in line with expectations, core PCE, Index, this is uh, month on month. This is year on year, is also in line with expectations. What is this down here? PC price index month on month seems as a little bit less. And this one here is year on year, is also in line with expectations. And everything is in line with expectations, we can say. So there should not really be a big, you know, like move, but you never know. So let's just watch this for. About three and a half more minutes and see where we close this candle. So far, this is very little movement here. This is like two or three points. Remember the weeks, and it's not long ago where you get massive candles because you had a surprise element in the market. Okay, this this doesn't seem to do much, but let's take a look in the meantime, you know. At the remainder of the day, what is what is scheduled? Fed talk here. Um, some you know smaller stuff here with with housing data at four, which is European time. So that's uh, that's ten o'clock New York time, Eastern time. We got bill auctions again today. Always need to keep them in mind. Mortgage rate. And then tomorrow we have ISM manufacturing. That's not really a big deal, but we have this Powell speech tomorrow. Okay. All right. So let, while this is forming, I don't I don't expect anything out of this thing. Everything is in line with expectations. Let's just take a look um, at individual stocks. Um, there are quite a number today that had unusual volume yesterday. So there are 16 in total. Let me just quickly go through. This is some medical therapeutical company. They probably reinvented sliced bread or something. They're up 800% yesterday. I'm not interested in that. Um, this one here, we also had a look at yesterday, Clearway Energy. Um, you know, this is basically coming out of a down move. This is not a stock that moves much, so it might not be that interesting. Um, what is that? Metal fabrication, Worthington Industries also doesn't look like something that exciting. They are, what is that? Set to join the small cap index. Okay, uh, they only have a cap of three and a half billion. That means that some ETFs, some funds basically are doomed to buy the stocks because they put it into an index. That's, I think, all that is. Oh, this very little coverage of this. Yeah. So uh, I, I don't think this is anything interesting. This is also really slow moving stock here, right? But you can see there's there's high volume and anticipation that 
some institutions have to buy the stock, but in itself, there's no news, there's no real catalyst. ICU medical is just not really breaking out or anything, it's just sitting there at very high volume. WP Carry, that's a read starting on a move, not interested in that. What's the news here? Uh, they also join mid cap 400. So again, it's the same thing. ETFs have to buy them. Carlisle, we saw that yesterday. Um, what was the news there again? They're also joining new indexes so it's a similar story they haven't really broken out anything i mean it just swings back and forth gme is for idiots i'm sorry to say yeah you can you could have made a lot of money back in the day i don't know what people are still monkeying around in the stock i really don't understand that so there's another utilities thing here which is also clear ways and i do want to drop that just now anyway it's not interesting this is a uh, mbs ETF, we don't care about that. Utilities, this doesn't have any history, this thing. And this is not an unusual weekly volume at all. Page two. This is another ETF, corporate bonds. Las Vegas Sands going the wrong way. Jabil going the wrong way. That's, no, that's more. This is going the wrong way. Workday is up. Kind of clearing this area. What's the news? They hiked the 2024 outlook, it says here. Beats estimate, raises guidance. Okay. We'll see. Let's see if there's anything. This was yesterday, right? So, yeah. But interesting is still the PE here. It's ridiculously high, obviously, the, four, the, the current PE. So, it's all about expectations that, you know, business is going to be better. So, right now, Forward P is almost at uh, at 40. So yeah, I don't know about it. Doesn't look that interesting. It's a big company, right? 69 billion market cap. If you believe in Jesse Stein stuff, I mean, this is not a Jesse Stein candidate anyways, but it should be smaller than that, right? There's NetApp, there was a stock in play. There was also a stock in play yesterday. It always depends on the time when they release the data, right? I don't always catch all of them. I look at the market chameleon list, that's it. By then, you know, when I look at it, if the data is not out and the data is not out, then we will miss certain stocks in play, like NetApp yesterday we missed. I don't know what exactly we missed here. We can look at yesterday one minute chart, or maybe let's just start with a daily. So this truly we broke out back to all-time highs it seems yes that was yesterday one minute pre-market see if there was anything interesting here this was the pre-market action seems pretty straightforward at least in hindsight it does right so you get what do you get nice trend line Maybe except for the last little dip, you could fairly cleanly connect it, but not so much here, right? And then it just, you know, broke out. I don't know if they, no, see, they didn't care about any pre market lows to be taken out. They went straight up. That was an interesting move. It's like a $4 move. That's pretty good, right? That's like 5% within five minutes or something. And yeah, net up. But honestly, like I didn't see anything here that you know. If you just believe in it that it will go up, then yeah, you just buy at the open, have your stop here, and then I don't know, you just watch the candles and try to get out at some point, or use a moving average that gets crossed here somewhere, and then you are out. I mean, later it went even higher, but how do you know that? There's no way of knowing that. Okay, so these are those guys from yesterday. So I don't know if, if NetApp is something interesting for anybody. You know, like the numbers here are what they are. Um, 
Sorgen. This is today. This is pre-market today. These is super big changes. I don't care about them. I want to see something 10 to 15 um, percent. And there's, there isn't that much. I mean, there's CIM. CIM is a $230 billion stock. Um, um, and they traded 284,000 shares that are priced at 250 bucks. Maybe it has something. I, I doubt it. I don't think this this big tanker has any flexibility there. So the other stuff is just up too much for my liking. On the decliner side, down a lot, down a lot on tiny volume, down a lot with 15.8 percent. Thirty-two dollar stock, three hundred fifteen thousand, almost a bit thin, right? Market cap eleven billion. PSTG earnings. PSTG. That's pure storage, right? This is pre market. This is so chop. I don't know. You need to have a clean trend line here. Three connecting points. That's what I want to see. But we don't really get it. And this is for a short, right? I'm not looking for this trend line to be broken to the upside. So. I don't know what the daily chart looks like. Pretty high up there and then broke back down. It's hitting, you can say it might be hitting support here if you believe in that. Um, so, you know, it might be in for a bounce, but the bounce is not what we want, right? PSTG is down 15%. So we want to see more downward action, but it might, you know, find support here on the daily. So I don't know if that's something that is smart taking. Then, yeah, we can look at CIM, of course, right? So, oh, look, I walked. CIM is now here, which means it has cleared this, this range here, this chop, and used to be higher. So, the market can, you know, look at that and say there might be another $50 to the upside on a $250 stock. Now, you do the math. And ask yourself, is that worth the capital that you want to push in here? You know what I mean? You get four shares for a grand. Okay, so now you have four shares. And this goes up a crazy $10 today. What do you make? You make four, you make $40, but you have to invest a thousand, right? If you want to invest more, you have to invest 10,000, right? So then you have to buy 40 shares or whatever. Like, do you, do you know what I mean? As I said, it's a big tanker, right? This, you cannot expect much of a price move here. Well, we can still look at one minute. There it is. This looks actually quite nice, so to say, because it's constantly pushing higher right so there's really buying pressure in this thing see this was clean here this was beautiful and, but it has lost it unfortunately right but maybe something to look at to learn or whatever i don't know um but yeah i think this is just not worth it given the, the amount of capital you need and then you can probably expect just very little movement in this okay so let's go to or back to the indexes and to a regular view let's just look at five minutes so what what did the whole core pc thing do nothing there's nothing to do here okay nothing to do let's take a look at dailies and I'm going to hide those drawings for more clarity. So here's the story. Um, yesterday, market failed, right? So they, they pushed it up and it completely failed the entire move. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that much because look at it. 
we pushed up hard. We are going sideways with tiny range trading days, except for yesterday. It had a bit more, but it all collapsed. So what, what is that, right? What, what could that tell us? Well, I personally think, but don't do what I do. I personally think that we might get another solid green candle in here and maybe even two or three more. And then at some point, there's a big gap here, by the way. This is the gap. We might hit hit that, reach that, fill that, something like that. Um, so basically, I would not be surprised if we get a bit more of an up. But then it might be that the air gets a bit thin here, so to say, right? Um, at some point, I would expect a bit of a pullback. We might not get it right away. However, there's one more thing. You can see yesterday's high is here, right? To the left, the high was lower. If today we don't take out yesterday's high, even by, it just has to be by a tick or something. Doesn't matter, just have to take it out. If we don't do that today, if we stay below it, then we would have a lower high to the left, a lower high to the right. And then I would be very interested in putting a line here and saying, okay, on Friday, if we break that to the downside, then we might have a swing high in place. Okay. But that will only be decided tonight and tomorrow, but it really depending on how we close today and what we're going to do tomorrow. There's one more thing from yesterday. Let me show you that. This is a butterfly, a bearish butterfly that did trigger. Unfortunately, it hit 1618, then went up another four points uh, or ticks, and then it only decided to go down. So hard to catch it yesterday, maybe didn't work. But the thing is not done, right? Typically, you would expect that we fill the pattern, which means we might go further down. Okay, so that's just something to keep in mind, even though things look nice right now with this trending up, right? Things are, are fairly green right now. Um, we might get a collapse in price at some point today, maybe. Another reason why I say that is you can see here, they are, they are, I put a line here. All these lows here, they are just lined up, right? So it just takes price, one push down, take them all out, and then maybe reverse again or continue low or whatever. So that's that's the kind of stuff I'm interested in today. That's what I want to see, right? What, what are we going to do here? Are we going to put in that swing high or not? Okay. Until then, um, I'm curious about... Um, what kind of signals we get today with some harmonic patterns, you know, one minute chart, maybe five minute chart, um, but then taking profits quickly um, rather than trying to sit on them. Because overall, this has been very chopped, right? There's very little range here, and maybe it breaks out today. We don't know, but we'll see about it. So, one more thing we need to do or can do right now the midnight open was here. I have to change this back to black and dot it. So I don't confuse myself. And then the 830, we just saw that open there, right? Let's just measure that. So here at 75, 65, that's a 10 point difference. That's nothing unusual. So far, you could say this is more like a bullish propensity. The problem I have with the look of this is in pre-market, we, we strongly dipped below the midnight open. Right, so we went down here by what is that down to 58 from 65. Yeah, you can do the math, that's like seven points or something. I would like to see price action not do that, not swing around it, not break below that much and then come back. So I'm going to be careful, you know, when it comes to just calling that a bullish day. I'm going to be careful. And the price action here in pre market, I didn't really like the dip. All right, uh, so we looked at the daily, we looked at the opening levels, we can also look at the hourly chart. 
And what do we do in the hourly chart? It's very simple. We try to draw these pullback zones from this move down yesterday. There was really the the big move yesterday was a down move, right? After the open, they pushed it high and then it collapsed entirely. So now we are nearing 618, right? So that's the next level to have in mind and see what price might be doing here. Again, you know, bigger uh, harmonic pattern here, bearish. This might touch 618 and go down to do what? To eventually take out these lows here. And you can also talk about this guy because that also lines up with them and that guy. Right? So one big flush and they're all gone. So that's something I'll be looking at as the open comes around. The dust has settled a little bit. This would be interesting here um, as a short play. Anything else on the daily chart, uh, sorry, the hourly chart? If this breaks down, we can do or make an, or put an extension in here because this will be the pullback and then it goes down. And then you can see it. now we have 1272 down there. There will be 1414. And I adjusted 1618 because I don't want to get, like yesterday was so annoying. I I was about to short this, but it violated 1618, so I didn't do it because I thought it would, would go higher, right? And it looked like a breakout that might continue, but it didn't. And then I basically missed the entire move down because there was an immediate kill candle here, right? You can see that, for example, on a 10-minute chart, this big red candle here took out one, two, three candles in a row. So it engulfed these three candles. That's called a kill candle. That's basically just pushing the button and saying, this is all wrong, we're going down. Okay, that's, that's what that is. You can play around with time frames. You could look at a 50-minute chart. You see the same big candle. One, two, three candles here. They all get taken out, right? And that's really what, uh, what the story is there. This morning we had something somewhat close to that as well. You can see here there's a big green candle, right? Took out the high of this one, took out the high of that. Well, was it the same high of this one roughly, right? So this was also a strong move, right? And it continued up. But this is not as obvious. This is really a kill candle here. Um, so yeah, this is what I'm looking for. And then it could all go all the way down here to the extensions. And I put the 1.7 to 1.618 so I don't get stopped out anymore in the future with 1.618 just being hit by a few ticks. I want to avoid that. Sometimes you, you might have people who just say, oh, I'm just going to not put a hard stop. I'm just going to wait if it really closes in this case above 1618, well, that's a bad idea. If if price then starts rallying, your risk parameters are completely thrown overboard. You will suddenly have major losses because you were just waiting, you know, hoping that you just get a spike through 1618. Those are usually bad ideas. You need to put program the hard stop in. The question is just at what level, right? So down here, maybe I can show this on the daily chart. We do have daily gaps. Oh my God. Let's just try to make this more visible. There's a big daily gap here, further up there. But there's also one here, right? You can see this. This didn't get filled, right? It's just a wick, but no solid fill. It's the same here. So price could eventually decide to go down there. I don't think there's anything else here except for this big one up there. Right. So these could be near-term targets. There's more stuff down here. Price will eventually reach down there anyways. Question is when. Um, right, so that's hourly chart, ES. I think this is something that people can work with. The problem, I already see it right now, is not just because of the news. It was quite muted in reaction. We went pretty close to 618. I don't like revisits when we got so close to it. So I'm I'm not going to trade this, 
right? A few minutes ago, thing, things might have looked differently because we are almost there. But now that we're easing back, I'm not interested in doing this anymore, right? So just waiting here for um, some harmonic patterns throughout the day, see if we get anything. If not, then no trade. We're just going to wait how the day pans out. Let's take a look at NQ. Oh, wait, before we do that, just look, look at DXY. DXY is doing exactly what my anticipation was. Hit 618. Then yesterday the equities deflated over the day and it's strongly up. It's it's really starting to bounce off of 6180 on the daily chart. You see this? These are my drawings. So this is, this is done. So I'm basically speculating on a continuation here in the DXY. And that will be at the expense of equities, right? If this goes up, equ equities tend to go down. We can also look at, look at the largest part of DXY, which is the Euro, USD pair. So everything now is in a mirror, right? Everything is, you know, upside down, basically. So you can also see here, we retested 618, which I didn't really like that much, but it seems that this is starting to go down, right? So the arrow here obviously is down. So if it's down, it suggests a weaker euro, stronger dollar. As the, strong, as the dollar gets stronger, equities tend to get weaker. The VIX is still low. Nothing much has happened here. There's nothing much to say. It's at a low level. This can erupt any time, right? But it can also stay like this for a long time. The S we looked at and Q basically looks the same as the S. Right, so we have a big candle. They took out the previous high of this guy. Um, again, we, we're gonna wait and have to check out if these are from yesterday. We're gonna delete them. Uh, what it's gonna do. The interesting thing in the NQ is we still have this gap here, daily gap that has not been filled by price really covering it. it just spiked through it, and then it gave up. It has happened one, two times, and then before that we failed just at you know just at the low of the gap so the gap seems to have some significance in terms of resistance here but we can also get a big green candle and then it's gone right so same story here if we close below the low of yesterday uh, below the high of yesterday and then follow through to the downside by cracking today's low wherever it might eventually be then we would have a swing high in place and then things would start to turn, maybe. One hour chart, move, moves, most significant move. Might still be on its way to 618, but it's easing back now considerably, right? So might not end up doing that much. This is not good for a harmonic pattern. This would have to go higher to get maybe a godly out of this. It's not doing that. And I'm trying to think of anything else we can draw here. Some people have better view or better look at potential harmonics than I do, but I don't really see much here on an hourly chart. Look at 50 minutes. Price is obviously easing back now. Don't see a pattern here. So let's leave that. Let's take a look at the Dow. So it's also, yeah, by the way, levels from, from the opening. Midnight is here. And then the 8.30 was there. So again, this would be bullish, but you can see where the dip. We're now coming back 30 minutes before the open to already dip back down. So that doesn't look very good. Uh, the YM, let me just draw these things as well. 8.30 and midnight is here. Same thing, right? So what about our friend here? It seems we covered the daily gap, so that's done. 
but we have a new one below which is pretty big actually this is a new daily gap below okay and apart from that the rest seems to be okay for now we don't need to look that much lower and then we still also have a daily gap above just like in vnq that's the stuff we've just drawn and then rty we just update a few things here as well so still hanging at a trigger zone still hanging there right. that's too much chop here i think see this could have been a swing high but no follow through and it just went sideways hourly chart again a lot of chop this might have hit 618 already in this one almost yeah i'm not interested if it comes back with a lot of imagination <laughs> you can probably draw a pattern that looks like this seven three yeah we still have to go up to six one eight though this is not high enough this is where it would have to go right for a solid pattern it always depends on where you anchor it if if you say the actual move started here not down there you get something like this and you know, I, I would not consider that this doesn't do anything so i'm just going to put that here but now you have not a godly you basically end up with a butterfly 786 this is a big triangle it needs to go up 382 which it easily did so that's fine now now we would draw extensions and then you have the 1272 right there which is almost the same on the same level as with with x kind of weird a little bit you have other lows here so you know you could suspect there's another one here you could suspect that we might at least hit 1414 maybe even take this guy out so this here is more interesting so i'm going to put an alert if we break below b i want to know that but this is an hourly chart we should have some time to then actually do something put a trade in uh, sorry put an order in but it would obviously suggest you know that this might get another bounce to the upside which again i can imagine that right as i said earlier you know we're consolidating everywhere we might still go up and these guys got beaten down they've been very weak it doesn't mean they have to continue to be weak right this might just be i mean use that undercut of all of this we had right we undercut the share of support now we're trying to get back into it it can work right might just go higher here don't just blindly assume this is just going to be resistance and it's not going to work it might work so you, you need to be always open to entertain such eventualities what else do we have 15 minutes i don't think that's that much more i don't know if that's a cipher here but it's just missing some more pullback and then obviously this is very extended so no it's nothing there no i think this is good the hourly chart here and then we can also quickly put opening levels in here so midnight it's here 8 30 here same thing big dip in the pre-market session so that's no good right so i'm not i'm not trading any opening place here i think we're gonna get more chop right so you can see this here this is really what i don't like there should be some more stability but some people might reason that um well this could just be the stop it's just a retest possible but we're not trading this now we are trading this in half an hour because then everybody's there and the volume is there and then we'll see what price really wants to do 
Okay, did I miss anything else? No, I think that's it. I think that's everything. We looked at the individual stocks. Gold is still holding up. Uh, oil is going up again a little bit. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I'll take profits quickly. We are still in the chop range. And very interesting to see if we do today and maybe tomorrow. I think waiting is an option today. If there are any harmonics, I might try them, but I don't expect too much out of them. Um, so that's the only plan for today, really, to look for some harmonics. One minute chart, maybe five minute chart, and then see. Because at the end of the day, the only thing that's really left for this week, besides ISM manufacturing, is this Powell speech, right? That occurs one and a half hours after the open tomorrow. The problem is tomorrow's Friday, right? So why why start new positions on a Friday? And yeah, tomorrow's also um, December 1st. So today is the last trading day in November. And I'm going to record this Kula Maggie monthly set up Canada video but I doubt that we will see that many candidates <laughs> the market is still um, the market is going up but it's not being propelled up by any new stocks from what I can see right and so we need those for bull bull market and right now I think we're just technically moving higher we had earnings season um, and that's it it's year end markets are friendly obviously november was picture perfect for a more optimistic month better performing month october was a good example for a volatile month and weaker right in september definitely a weak month historically so everything fits fits the statistics for now, right? So December, year-end rally, Santa Claus rally, maybe, right? I mean, we have to uh, we have to realize that we are only trading basically two weeks in December, then there's Christmas, right? So trading is going to dry up very quickly December. If you look at this, you know, tomorrow's the first, so scratch that. Then we have one full week here. And then another one till the 15th. And then the week after that is already the one approaching um, Christmas, right? So Christmas this time is going to be on the 20th, this 24th, there's the 25th. So, um, yeah, we, we might get, you know, a third trading week that is not completely terrible. But for the most part, um, I think, the, you know, the next two weeks and that's basically it. If the market cannot find, you know, direction to the upside, then we won't get a Santa Claus rally, but maybe we'll get one. Okay, enough talking. Take care. Have a nice day and talk to you tomorrow. Bye.